Hey everybody, it is uh, Wednesday. So we are in August already, hard to believe. So I'm gonna do something today. I've got a question here and it's got, it's a multiple part type of thing. So I, this is kind of gonna be kind of a demo question answer combination. I'm gonna show some examples and kind of go through a process here. Um, but uh, first thing I wanna remind you is we're in August already. Now is the time to gear up for Christmas. Uh, it, it's not too soon, trust me. The earlier you can start gearing up and getting ready for Christmas. This video is gonna be specifically about if you go out and you carve on site, which I think uh, is a great way to, you know, not just make extra money, but also get the word out on your, uh, on your signs. So uh, here's the question that uh, I got from Alan Heller. Um, I'm starting my production process, getting ready for the festivals. Um, and I, that I'm going to sell to in a few months and sell at in a few months. One problem I've always had is spraying the edges of the sign with the ink and, and not getting it or getting it on the back of the sanded sign. Um, any tips that you can, you can, that you have, well, I'm just stumbling all over the place. Mm -hmm. I've just got so much to cover. So many things going through my mind anyway. So I'm going to cover that. Um, and then also I heard on your festival sign, that's the one that I was uh, over, Vicki and I were over in California with Ryan and Amy, uh, that you had boards pre-cut and the uh, sides sprayed, which is absolutely true. Um, that's what you need to do really to save you as much time out at your events as possible. Uh, do you cut them all the same length? I was wondering in a case when one person wanted Joe on a board and another person wanted Joseph. Um, and then he's got another question. But here's what I want to do. Um, first of all, you need to go back and reference in conjunction with this video, go back and reference number 56. That's where I rounded the edges on the boards. Um, and I'm going to have links in the bottom. Um, and number 136 where I was at Lowe's and I was choosing out boards. So what I'm going to go through is I'm going to go through how I cut up a board um, even though I'm not going to cut it, but I'm going to show you how I go about uh, choosing a board and what I do with it after I choose it. So um, just stick with me. It may be kind of confusing at first, but here's what I'm going to do. So I just grabbed a couple boards out of my stack that I got from, uh, from Lowe's. I always try and wear gloves to keep down on the splinters as much as possible. So what I've got here is I've got two boards. Uh, that are cedar, the cedar fencing, and then I got two boards that are the redwood fencing. And these are what, I, uh, what I'm making signs out of now, either the cedar or the redwood. The redwood we just kind of stumbled across lately. Uh, the cedar is what I've been using for years and years. So let's, let's pretend that, um, that I just got these boards back. I picked them out at Lowe's, I got them back here, and now I gotta cut boards out of them. I gotta cut up boards because I am getting ready to go to a show like I did when I was up in Oatman, or I've got to prepare boards for a show or, or just for stock in the shop. So if, I, if I'm looking at this board, I'll take one, every one of these straight through. If I'm looking at this board, I don't have hardly any cup to it. There is a slight cup, but um, I don't have any cup to it in essence. So I can use either side for the face of my board. In this particular instance, I'm going to use this as the face of my board. If that's the case, then what I always do is I have three different size boards that, that are my standards that I cut out of here. Um, where's my pencil? Here's my pencil. This one, I'm going to cut it here because I'm going to get rid of that knot. And I'm going to measure over 24. Or actually, my 24 inch boards, I always cut at about 23 and a half. The reason for that, I'm, I just got so much information here that I wanna go through. The reason I cut my 24 inch boards at 23 and a half is because when I, if I ship this, um, I, many of my boxes are 24 exactly that I ship in, and I always want a little bit of a, a buffer at the end so they don't fit in there so tight. But anyway, so I can get a 24 inch board then the next size board down is 18, which means I can, eh, 18 will not fit out of here. So that means my next size board down is 14. So I'm gonna get an 18 inch and a uh, 
six by, excuse me, a six by 24 inch, a four by 18. And actually, I'm, you know what? I'm gonna lay these out here. These are the three size boards that I use that are my standard boards. Now, again, you, this is just what I do, guys. You may have different sizes, but this is the way I go about it. I got a six by 24, a four by 18, and a four by 14. So these are what I'm cutting out of here. Now, I also cut shaped boards like the, the ribbons, and I've got three different sizes of ribbons. But let's say for, for, uh, for explanation purposes, we're just gonna stay with the saw cut boards. So I got a six by 24, a four by 18, and now out of this section here, I'm probably gonna try to avoid that knot so I can get, uh, I can get a four by 18 out of this one and because I can eat anything between three and a half and four, I can get out of there. So I wouldn't get a six by 24, but I could get a four by 18 out of this board. So I would cut it here. I would cut it here. I would cut them all to length first. Then I rip them down. So I'll get a four by a four by 14 out of this one, a four by 18 and a six by 24. I told you I'm gonna be all over the place, babe, sorry. So that's three boards that I'm getting out of there. The rest of it will be kind of scrap. Again, you know, you may have different sizes, but that's how I would divvy up that board. This one, again, I'm gonna pick, this is this does have a little bit of a cup. This is the, the, the crown in the center. So this definitely would be the face of my board. So it looks like I can get a six by 24 out of here. I'll probably cut that knot out. I'm gonna get a six by 24 there. Here, mm, that's a little bit thin. I won't be able to get anything out of this area, so I'll probably cut it here. That knot I can probably deal with. I could probably fill that, so it means I can get a, a probably a four by, I'm gonna mark this as I'm going, six by 24. I can get a four by 14 here. And this is actually scrap. That, uh, that's a really bad part. You don't want to mess with that. That is going to be all jacked up on you. Now, if you have smaller boards, like you're going to go a two inch or a three inch board, you know, then you can fit some other size boards out of there. For this board, I'll get a six by 24, which is a $40 board and a four by 14. And I get, uh, what do I get? About 15, I guess, out of that. So that's a uh, 55 what, $55, something like that, even with just two boards. The rest of it will be scrap. I'll burn it in the wintertime. All right, next uh, next board. Now, here's the redwood. So, let's see. Now, these, the thing about this redwood is it's thicker than the cedar, uh, quite a bit thicker, and I don't, I don't see much cupping in this stuff at all. Now, on this one, it looks like I won't be able to do much down here, although... I might be able to get a 14 inch out of that, a four by 14, I think I can. It'd be real close, if I cut that, if I rip that at three and a half, means I can get a four by 14 out of that. Uh, this will be scrap. So I'll get a six by 24 out of here. That's gonna be really close, but I'll, I'll be able to fit that. I'll get a six by 24. Um, and then down here, mm, yeah, that's pretty rough. I don't think I'm going to... I might be able to get a small ribbon out of that, but we're not talking about ribbons. But if I had a small board, yeah, I might be able to get a 4x14 out of that, actually, because I can rip that down to 3.5. It's a little bit better on the back side. I can rip that at 3.5, and, and I still... Yeah, I can get a 4x14 out of that. So I get a 4x14 and 6x24 and another 4x14. So that's what? About 40 and 30, that's about $70 I can make out of that board. All right, one more, just as a... Now this one is different because it's got a lot of sapwood on the back. That's the white stuff. Now, I don't mind sapwood, but I don't like most of the board to be sapwood. I don't mind... This is probably going to be just fine. And it turns out this does have a little bit of a crown on the front. So this would be the face of my board. So what can we get out of here? I always trim the ends of the boards off just in case there's a split in there. So I can get a 4x18 on that. Uh, this one, let's see. I think I, yeah, I can get a 6x24 down here, easy. So I can get a 6x24. I'm writing upside down, guys. Sorry about that, but that's the way it is. So if that, 
I got a six by 24 there. That would go to there. And that's going to be trimmed here. What do we got? And I can get another six. I don't want, I don't, that knot is kind of loose. I wouldn't, yeah, it is loose because I just pushed it all the way through. So I wouldn't use that, but I can get a four by 18 there. That's the way I would cut these boards up. And I just take them one at a time and I cut what I can get out of them and then move on. And then I just stack these things up. So uh, I want to kind of go over that. How are we doing on time? We're going to be long. Huh? Yeah. All right. So uh, the next part, um, when, he, when, uh, when Alan was talking about stacking up the boards and spraying them, here's the thing, guys. Remember, and this is the thing that Alan didn't catch, is I never sand the back of the board until the sign is completely carved. I don't want to take any... Um, any thickness away and this is especially true in the cedar redwood it's not that big a deal because it's a little bit thicker you got a little bit more material to play with but I still don't sand the back of the sign at all until the sign is completely done so for instance uh, here's a board that I've prepared that is is pretty much ready to go the only thing it needs to be done is sprayed so I would do all my boards to this um, uh, uh, just like this and then I stack them up and I spray them so if if some of the ink or the, the black gets on the back it doesn't matter because I'm gonna sand that off anyway I haven't sanded that yet you can see I smoothed down the front because that's where my hands are gonna be sliding and I don't want a bunch of splinters in my hands and I want a clean layout but the back of the boards I never touch them until the sign is already carved and ready to go I leave them as blank boards so if I had a bunch of boards you can see also I drill them uh, top and bottom. That's just something that I do. I, I never drill before I put the edge on the board. Now this particular one is, uh, is beveled. It's not scalloped. But whether you're scalloping or just putting the bevel round in the corners or putting the bevel, and that's where that uh, video number 56 comes into play. You can watch me round those corners and how I do that. But whether you're scalloping them or, or putting the bevel on them and rounding the corners makes no difference. These same rules kind of apply uh, the rules that I use. So um, then what I do, let's say that all of these boards, let's say that I've got three different stacks of boards, which I do. Those are four by 18s. Those are four by 14s. So let's say I've gone through and I've cut all these boards. The next thing that I will do is I will sand the surface of these. I will pick out, I will go through each one of these boards and I will make sure that I know what is the front and what is the back. That's the front of my board. That's the, the, the size, the side that I like for the face of my board right there. This one, it could be either one, but I think I think I like that side a little bit better. It's a little, few little uh, less uh, marks on there. So I'm going to pick that side. I always look to see if there's a cup on there. That one, I'll pick that as the front of my board. That one, that's got a little sap one in. I don't mind that, but it's a little bit rougher there. So I'm going to pick that as the front of my board. So I will go through and I will pick the fronts of my boards on all these. Now you can see this one is a little bit thinner because I had to uh, rip a, a knot out of there. So it's a little bit thinner than four inches. It's three and a half. Whereas these other four by 18s are right at four. But it still makes good. I just, it makes a good sign. And I would use that for one single line. Whereas on these wider ones, I could get two lines on there if I want. So that would be the front of my board right there, I think. I like that one a little bit better. So I go through and I, I make the face on all my boards. Okay, so that's done. Now I'll go through and I will... Each one of those I will sand with my rough belt. I'll sand off the surface and get them smooth on the surface for my layout. Then once all the sanding is done on, on the surface of my boards, again, I'm not doing the back, just the front. So once that's all done, then I will do my edging, whether it's scalloping or whether it's um, on, I'm, I like the rounded corners and bevel. Uh, I'll do that. Then I go through and I stack them all up and um oh actually i'll, I'll uh, yeah i'll stack them all up no i won't spray them until after i've drilled the holes then i will line them up this way again assuming these are all rounded corners and i've already got my edge on here i'll make my marks drill my holes 
turn it over, do the same thing, drill my holes. Then I stack them up and, and spray them. I'll put them on my Lazy Susan and I'll spray them. If I was going to spray all these at the same time, I would put them all together. I bring up my little Lazy Susan jig. Man, I'm just kind of doing it. And I would line them all up. Again, let's assume that all the edges and, and all the holes are drilled here. And I would stack them up. And I'd spray, spray them, spray them. Move this over here. Spray them. Now, if this was, if I had them stacked this way, I would turn this down so I'm not spraying the face of that board. And then I would spray, spray, spray. And then you're pretty much done. Then you can put these on the shelf and they're ready to go. So I, if you guys want, again, this is, this is really more of a coffee and questions, but if you guys want to see me actually prepare boards and go through the whole process, I can make a long video on it and I could do that on a, say one of the Friday videos or one, on, or, or one of the LTSs. But I just, I wanted to kind of give you guys an insight. Remember, the, the main thing that he was saying is that he was sanding the back of his boards before he ever made a sign out of it. I just don't do that. I, it just is extra work and it just doesn't need to be done. So that was that. And then, um, oh, uh, do you guys do multiple size of boards? No, I don't when I'm out at a, an event. These are the boards that I have and then I have 12 by 24s or I have my little ribbon boards, but I don't cut anything to size out there at the event. Let's say that there's somebody that wants this sign, this board, and they wanted to say Joe, then I will use as big a letters as I can get on there that says Joe. If they want Joseph and Mary, then it probably wouldn't be that big of letters. I'll just use as big a letters as I can get for the size of the board that they want um, and, um, and what they wanted to say it depends on how many letters they want. So I don't, I don't, um, I don't adjust the size of the board. I adjust the size of the letter to pick the board that they want. So that kind of, it, it makes it nice and simple for me. That's kind of the, the rules that I've always gone by. All right. Let's see if I'm missing anything here. Um, no, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, okay, so I, again, guys, I kind of hope that clears it up a little bit. If you guys want a more detailed video on this, I can absolutely do it because I need to prepare a bunch of boards anyway. I'll just cut up a bunch of stuff. In fact, I can make a video where I'm cutting them um, and doing the whole thing all the way through. It'll be kind of a long video. Um, so remember, these two videos, go watch number 56 and watch number 136. And again, I'm going to reiterate, if you need to... Um, search our channel here's how you do it you go to old day 100 on YouTube and you'll see this screen and then you just type what you want in that little uh, that little box that comes up when you click that uh, that little hourglass so you could click uh, uh, rounding corners or you could click board preparation or scalloping or anything you want that's how you search uh, our actual channel okay uh, let's see sign carvers of the day Man, I'm going really long. I apologize, guys. There's just so much stuff here, and I, I probably left out a bunch. So if you have questions, let me know what you do. Alan Moody, one of our UK buddies. Alan is just doing some really cool stuff. Alan, you've come so far in your, uh, in your sign-making skills. Great job, my friend. And by the way, he built, a, he built himself a little shop out in the back uh, that I showed one time. Uh, it's got a great little shop. I love it. All right, and this is from uh, David Martin in Australia, local football team. Isn't that cool? Wow, very nice. Yeah. Kind of like uh, your Vikings. Yeah, kind of like the Vikings logo, yeah. Different colors, but anyway. So that's the sign carvers of the day. All right, you guys, that is it. We've got a demo coming up on Friday. Um, I think I've got in mind what I want to do, and it's going to be something that I hadn't done before, and I'm really looking forward to it. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, give it a thumbs up and share our videos if you can. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Um, we do this three times a week. Friday will be a demo. I'll probably be running, uh, running some equipment of some kind. So have a great week, everybody. We'll see you on Friday. Bye.